Who in the audience knows what this is here? Now, if you said a Nintendo Famicom, you are correct. This is what they got in Japan. We got the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, here in the US and in Europe, but this is the beautiful game system that they got in Japan to play 8-bit Nintendo games. Now, the wonderful thing about this system, even now today, is the fact that collecting games for the Famicom are a lot less expensive and there's very little language barrier. Now, I mean, they also look great too. Taking a look at the cartridges, you have carts with great artwork, different colors. These are awesome looking games to collect. And thanks to Sean Orange and Vink over at Famicom Dojo, I have learned to love and appreciate the Famicom over the years. Thank you guys for everything that you have done for me and for the community over the years. If you haven't checked them out, please make sure you check out Famicom Dojo. Now, recently I was over on AliExpress because, well, I do 3D print these stands. I was looking for some accessories for my Monoprice Jewel 3D printer. And I was on there and I was looking at some things and I realized, hey, dummy, uh, you have a video game channel too. Why don't you check out the video game stuff that they have? And when I did, I found this here, which addresses some of the issues with the original Nintendo Famicom. This is the HD 8-bit Entertainment System Super Console. Now, with the original Famicom here, it only has an RF output. Modern flat panel TVs, most of them don't have that these days, and even if they do, that's a Japan RF signal. It's between like channels 94 and 95 here in the States, and it looks terrible. Now, they did come out with the AV Famicom, and there are also mod kits you can get where you can do an RGB output, so you can get a component video output out of the back of a Famicom or an AV Famicom. There have in the past been HDMI mod kits. That's actually what our top loader NES, under a subscribe sign here, make sure you subscribe, basically that's running an HDMI output out of it. But for some folks who just want to get Famicom games playing on their modern TVs, quick and easy, that's what this promises. Let's take a closer look. So taking a look at the box itself, you can see up top here, HD 8-bit, HD Entertainment Super Console. Um, no, the Super would be the 16-bit on here. Uh, there's an HD cable, about 1.5 millimeter or meter available for some TV with HD function, and the quality of images can be increased by 40%. Here you can see it does have HD and AV outputs. The controllers look really good, at least as far as the artwork goes. Nothing really on the rest of the box, so let's take a look inside. We're gonna start with just the system because, okay, this is interesting. Check this out. Retro Genesis? And this decal is not laid on here very well. For the controller ports, they're using 9-pin NES-style connectors, which is nice. Um, it does still have the slots on the side, just like the original Famicom, for the, cart for the controllers to sit right in the sides. On the back, looks like for power is a micro USB, which I'm not a fan of. 4x3, 16x9 switch, does have your AV outputs here. There is your HDMI output there. Well, it does have the flap just like the original Famicom. And we'll take bring our Famicom in here in a second and compare these side by side. Let's see, for the accessories. This was literally just like sitting here. That, okay. They included an AC adapter with an adapter. So this basically is a um, non-US type adapter for power. And then that just goes right on the top of it. Uh, for voltage output, five volt, one amp. So um, fairly high current output on here. Now the player one and player two controllers are actually marked as such. This is player two. Now one thing, if you're hoping for it, this does not have the microphone input on it like the actual one does. You know, this does not feel terrible. Um, it feels very lightweight, but the D-pad feels okay. Start and select are okay. Face buttons are okay. I know some people will not like the fact that they are at an angle. I personally would rather just see a two-button control. I'm sure the upper two buttons here are probably turbo. That's player two. 
And then as you can see, player one is labeled as such right there. And then in the other little side box here is just your HDMI cable. All right, final thing to test out. I can't believe that this was just like wadded up there. That's that's terrible. Like, put some effort into it. But one thing I do want to compare side by side is the casing and everything. And it's very close. So this has more of a slope to it than this. This is a little bit more vertical and it actually tapers in this way where that's a more gradual tapering towards the center. Um, it has the you know eject mechanism here where this has the Japanese writing. This is actually in English. Uh, slide, let's see, what does it say here? Slide four to turn power on. And it's, I don't know if this will show up. F-O-R-W-A and then the next line is R-D. Depress when a malfunction occurs. Um, that's not exactly what it should say now. Uh, this, unlike the original, does have a little LED right there, but does this have the paint? It does not. So on the original, that's actually a pretty snappy switch. The original Famicom just has a little piece of tape or paint there to, to tell when it's on or off. This does not, but again, it does have the LED on the front. Um, last thing I wanna check before we play games is how's the cartridge slot? So here's just my copy of Samurai Pizza Cats. Not super tight. The eject mechanism does work. I would say if you're going to use the eject mechanism, put your hands on both sides and slide up. It does, it does have a bit of a crunch sound to it uh, going in. Here, listen real close. Versus, yeah, this does not have that crunchy sound that this does. Where, I mean, you can hear the pins basically being pushed back. Listen. And there's a significant amount of wobble there versus the original one some but not nearly as bad I don't think okay we're gonna go ahead we're gonna put Samurai Pizza Cats back in we're gonna do some gameplay all right so we are ready to go ahead and get playing I do have the stock controller plugged in here now one thing that I notice is looking at the TV behind me those colors in person actually don't look bad looking at my computer monitor down below the camera here the monitor I'll actually be playing on over here these both look a little bit off to me so it could be just the way that I have that one set looks better and I've got to tweak these settings here now one thing too I also realize is the fact that this did not include any kind of an instruction manual so I mean granted it's a Famicom so I mean we're, we're we're not doing a whole lot here that we don't know how to do but the main thing is what are the extra buttons on the controller use let's check and see how this looks and plays now one thing I'm going to do here real quick I'm going to feel along the back there it is I think I have it so there's the four by three there's 16 by nine and uh, four by three this is the aspect ratio you should play NES games in just saying so let's check and see do we have reverse duty cycle issues too we most certainly do you know I have to say this doesn't look terrible though looking at the capture display you know what I'm seeing being recorded on the laptop, what I'm looking at here. Mario looks, uh, he looks like he's gonna be sick. He looks a little bit green. But now listen, when I talk reverse duty cycle, coins in Super Mario Brothers where you can hear it. Check this out. So you can hear it was all pitched up there. That's not something we like to see and hear. Um, we're gonna go ahead though too. We're gonna go through quite a few games here. I'm gonna test out other controllers. Oh, so, the top button here is fireball, that's jump, that is turbo, and that's turbo as well. So um, think of it as a backwards dog bone controller. Speaking of which, let's test that out. 
Now, I do have my dog bone controller here ready to rock and roll on Rockman 2. Now, the one thing I don't have to test out on here is I actually don't have a Famicom version of Punch-Out. Now, it is interesting, too, the fact that I'm able to use basically NES controllers on this if I wanted to. Um, so, like the Dog Bone controller works just fine. Um, or the any of the AV Famicom controllers would also work. This, I think, is looking better and sounding better than Mario to me. But I'm, I'm sure purists out there would be able to really tell the difference between how this is looking and sounding versus original hardware. So we've now plugged in our graphics gear, uh, covered, decal, personalized NES controller. If you want to see how I did this, check out the video right up there. With Samurai Pizza Cats, this is actually the copy that I got from Norm, the gaming historian at the Mo Game Con in 2019. Now, I've played this a bit, and, I mean, this is looking and playing decently. I mean, I am seeing some slight blurriness, so there is that. I will say, overall, you know, the control seems decent. Sound is okay. Not, not great, but it's okay. Yeah, overall, I can't complain about the, the gameplay a whole lot on this. This is pretty much doing what I would expect. Up next, we're going to check out the NES Advantage controller with Mighty Final Fight and see, see what we got. This is such a great game. I mean, yeah! And this is a game, too, that, like, the music, to me, is a huge part of this game. And one of the reasons why I love it so much is that it just is a great-looking, great-playing game. So here's what I'm going to say about this. If you don't have an NES or a way to play NES games and you want to play Japanese imports, this is not a terrible way to play for the money. Does it have reverse duty cycle issues? Absolutely. Are the color palettes perfect? Yeah, they are not. But you know what? I'm actually enjoying this quite a bit. Now, one thing that uh, we'll check out here in a moment too, which I'm really not expecting to work, is the Famicom Disk System. Um, I, I have not tried a single clone that works with the Famicom Disk System at all. There's just something about the way that these systems on a chip work that the FDS just does not work with. Uh, but this is for a HDMI Famiclone. I mean, this is going to be pretty similar to like a Retron or any other systems on a chip that you would find out there. So there, there is that. But the fact that you don't need a 60 to 72 pin adapter to play a Famicom game via HDMI cable, that's pretty awesome. Now, I don't have a CRT. I don't own one, so I don't have a way to test and see if light gun games would work if I would use a, uh, a CRT. But for what this is, I don't hate it. I mean, it is very similar, I would say, to, like I mentioned, some of the, the Retrons and other things that are out there. And unfortunately, as I expected, this, that, that is the error message that we get when we try to hook up the Famicom disk system, which every clone console I have ever tried has basically done this. I, I, the system on the chip ones, at least. Things like the, the retro USB AVS work with it. The analog system works with it. The budget clones do not. So hold the phone. I actually forgot something before I wrapped up our review. As you can see, I have no cartridge in here, but we do have 300 in one games listed. There's actually two different variants of this system. One that includes no games built in, and this version here that actually has 300, and as you can see here, the controllers do fit rather nicely in the side. So let's take a look real quick 
at the built-in games. There's 300 in one here, and a lot of them are remixes and whatnot, but a lot of them also have pretty good titles. So we have the first three Adventure Island games are on here. B-Wings is a great game. Uh, let's see, Back to the Future, not so great. Uh, let's see, Bomberman is on here. Uh, Bubbly 2, Bucky O'Hare, seriously? So it looks like these games are actually in Russian. Yep, that's Bucky O'Hare. And the reason why I say that is because there are some of these titles that you can get on here that, you know, they are more ROM hacks than the actual games. So let's hit the reset button. That's how you go through there. So there was uh, Bucky O'Hare, Burger Time. Let's see, since it wasn't on since I didn't have basically the uh, Famicom version. Let's see if uh, Punch-Out is on here. Excite Bike, Flappy is on here. Ice Climber, I can remember. Goonies, Gradius. Akari, Akari 3, Akari Warriors on that, James Bond Jr. Joust, Jurassic Park, welcome to Jurassic Park. Mario Bros, I'm sure that's probably the original Mario Bros. Yep, that's the original game. I'll play this for just a second. This actually doesn't look too terrible. But now, the one thing I want to do is I do want to go and check out Super Mario Brothers on, uh, on here if they have it. Mighty Final Fight is on here. Pretty good. Mrs. Pac-Man, Mystery Quest, Hockey. Why Hockey is that one... These don't make any sense, so it's not exactly in alphabetical order. Pac-Mania, that's awesome. Power Blade 2. Snow Brothers is on here, that's pretty cool. Squoon! Super, Com Super Mario Bros., so let's check and see if the built-in Super Mario Brothers has that reverse duty cycle issue. And it does, so... Definitely something built into the system, which is disappointing to see. Actually, you hear it, you don't see it. Again, take a listen. Okay, so we'll go back. Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3 also on here. The Goonies, The Jungle Book, The Legend of Kage, The Little Red Riding Hood, so that's interesting. So I am not seeing Punch-Out on here, which is kind of disappointing. It would be kind of nice to be able to test the um, latency and whatnot with that. Again, not quite accurate there on the audio. This almost reminds me of like the Dendi systems. Um, as far as the fact that with the Russian and everything that's in here. A little bit of a graphical issue I'm seeing in the lower left-hand corner. And this is actually where having that turbo comes in handy on Super Mario Bros. 3. Alright, very cool. So, this is the version that uh, in the end here... Here, let's show you the product page real quick. So here you can see there are two different versions on here. Uh, 2270 right now, normally 2390, has no games, and then for 2840, that's the version that I actually purchased, has built in 300 games, uh, and then with shipping and everything was about $60, $70 or so. So um, I was actually, I completely forgot, first of all, that it had the built-in games on here, uh, but now that I see that and I remember it, I had actually expected to get a multi-cart, so kind of a bummer for that that it wasn't a multi-cart because quite frankly i can't use this now in other systems now let's do some final thoughts so there you have it our look at the retro genesis i still think it's funny they use the genesis name on an 8-bit system what do i think of it first and foremost i mean they got they did get the aesthetics pretty accurate i mean looking at an original famicom versus this system they even kind of got the yellowing right on the colors on the plastic i do have to admit that um i did think the cartridge slot was a bit well 
not great. Um, it is not compatible, don't you fall, uh, with the Famicom Disk System. And I, honestly, I did not expect it to be. Most of these system on a chips type systems, they're not compatible with it. I didn't love the crunch that cartridges gave me when I put them in the cartridge slot. That was not a confidence inspiring feel. Um, the controllers are not bad and they do sit and lock in the side like you see here, just like the original. Now, I did try to put these on here just to see. Yeah, those are a little bit bigger for these slots. Now, I will say, they do hold the controllers very tightly, so you won't have an issue there. A little bummed out that we don't have the microphone on the Player 2 controller. That would have added cost, but you know, that would have been a more authentic experience, but there also weren't that many games that took advantage of that. Like The Legend of Zelda was about it, the Pole's voice. Um, I, I hate the reverse duty cycle issues. I mean, these have had that problem, these system on the chips, have had that reverse duty cycle issue since day one, and it's annoying as hell. And I really wish that manufacturers would fix that. It, just do it. Just do it. Um, I don't have, like I mentioned, a CRT, so I cannot test light gun games. I would wager this probably will not work with light gun games, uh, just as it did not work with the Famicom Disk System. But above and beyond that, like, I actually really enjoyed this. I think it looks terrific, and this is one of those things that, like, I may take and put in another room to be able to play Famicom games and not put my original system or my Sharp Famicom Twin that I have, you know, at risk of getting damaged. The fact that it uses an NES style controller connector, I like that too. It's easy to use controllers. And as you saw, I ran the gamut there that it worked with the Dogbone, the original, and the NES Advantage. I did test off screen. It does work with the NES Max. Fine. Um, I think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is, quite honestly. I mean, when you compare it to the NES clone systems that you can get, and then just use a 60 to 72 pin adapter, that's a heck of a lot less expensive than this is. But you don't get the aesthetics, and that's what you're paying for here. Now, if you want to check this out, I will have a link down below in a pinned comment where you can check out this exact system. Let me know, too, is this something that you would pick up? Um, Looking at it, like, I love the style, and this is feeding off my love of this. Above and beyond that, for the money, it is way overpriced for what it does. Again, you can get a clone NES system with a 60 to 72 pin adapter, so you can play Famicom and NES games for under 40 bucks. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, if you do want to check out some of the other clone system reviews that we've done, like from Hyperkin, like from Retrobit, and more, I'll have those videos coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.